The updated FlightRadar24.com has quite a lot of added functionality. So to help you make the most of all that, we're doing a series of video tutorials diving deep into various aspects of the site. Here we're looking specifically at the Settings button and everything you can do once you're in that menu. So once you've clicked on Settings, you'll see you have three tabs at the top here. Map, Visibility, and Miscellaneous. So if we start off with the Map section, you'll see plenty of options here for how the map will look, various overlays you can add on top, and so on. The map style is pretty self-explanatory. The standard terrain map is the default, or you can switch to road map, for example, to minimize things like mountain ranges and bring up, you guessed it, roads. You can take a look at what that looks like if we zoom in here. So now you basically have a typical Google Maps display, except with aircraft. Then as we move along back through the maps here, it's basically a matter of changing the style. You may find you prefer one or another. You have a satellite view, of course, hybrid version, or even a black and white option, which makes the aircraft especially prominent and easy to see if that's your priority. And down here, brightness does what you would expect it to. And the day-night line will show you where it's night. So with the day-night line on, you can see just as you'd expect. Then below that, you can choose to overlay ATC boundaries in three different colors. Now these are what's known as Worldwide Flight Information Region and Upper Information Region Boundaries. They're basically the boundaries where one ATC authority's control stops and another begins. You'll see in some cases, as here with Sweden, that these boundaries take up entire countries, while other countries are subdivided into a few or more. Oceanic tracks will overlay predefined tracks across the Pacific and Atlantic. In this case, we have a couple over the Atlantic here. And lately, there are less tracks in place across oceans because of lower traffic levels, but also advances in space-based ADS-B. That mean planes can be tracked over the ocean, so the tracks are less necessary. But you will see any track that's currently in place once you toggle this on. Below that, you have some aeronautical charts you can overlay. These will give you nav aids, low altitude charts, and high altitude charts. The high altitude charts here are generally the ones used by commercial aircraft. So you can see here, uh, there are white and yellow lines. The white ones are newer RNAV routes, while the yellow ones are the older traditional routes. And if you zoom in far enough, you can see the names of the waypoints. The characters you see on the top of the line are the name of the route, and the numbers below the line are the distance between the two waypoints. Below that, you'll see you have the airport pins option. That will bring up or hide pins for major airports within the frame. And if you want to see more, you can just zoom in. And you can use the maximum number of airport pins slider here to declutter the screen if it's getting a bit much. And down in aircraft icon size, you can choose the size of aircraft icons or leave it on auto so that it will adjust according to how zoomed in you are and how many aircraft are displayed on screen. You can see the effect a little better if you zoom out and choose large. It just gets a little bit cluttered again. Below that, you can choose to have the aircraft animated or not by toggling on or off. That means whether you see them moving constantly or only when the flight's position is updated. And finally, aircraft labels, which will give you basic info about each flight on the map without clicking on them. And we'll also open up a few more options for customization. At a certain zoom level, you'll see by default here the call sign shown. And then you can choose to add or subtract different types of info. So we can change that call sign to the actual flight number. And then you can add additional pieces of info, anything from registration to altitude and speed. And for slightly easier viewing, as in this case, it's a bit difficult to see the registration on that Emirates flight, you can add a label background. So then if we turn that off, go back up to the top and head over to the middle tab, visibility. This one is a little simpler than the previous. So here you can toggle on and off the various sources of aircraft data. See ADS-B, space-based ADS-B, MLAT, and so on. You can also set it to estimate aircraft positions when they're out of coverage. That's down here. And below that, you'll see you can toggle various types of traffic on and off. So if you were to zoom into a busy airport like London Heathrow, for example, if you want to make sure you're only looking at planes that are actually in the air at this point, you can toggle aircraft on ground off and it will disappear everything that's on the ground at Heathrow. You can bring that back and even add ground vehicles. And of course, gliders. And finally, we have the miscellaneous section. And the most interesting feature here is right at the top, the trail tooltip. So when that's on and you select a flight, you'll be able to hover over that aircraft's trail 
and see relevant info about the flight at that point. You can also choose to hide the aircraft photo. Click on this flight. See, we no longer have the photo there. And if you have that aircraft photo on, which is the default, assuming we have a photo of the plane in the Jet Photos database, it will show up alongside the flight info. And if we go back into the miscellaneous tab, the next four items below control what you see over on the left-hand side of the screen. Most track flights, statistics, latest tweets, and latest blog posts. You can turn all of those off or on as you wish. Remember that if you have those on, but at any point you're in the map and want to remove all the extra boxes, as we'll see here, you only need to click anywhere on the map like this. And you click once more to bring them back. Beyond that, you just have a series of units. You can adjust from time zones to temperatures, speeds, and so on. And at the very bottom, if you find you've just toggled on or off way too many things and you don't want to go and find them all, you can just click here to reset to the standard settings. And that's about it for the settings button. We hope you're finding everything useful and intuitive to figure out. Any questions, give us a shout in the comments.